Good morning and praise the Lord. Oh, I said praise the Lord. Why are you saying amen like you don't want to say it? Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord this side. Praise the Lord here. Praise the Lord here. Praise the Lord here. Ah, praise, oh, praise the Lord, worship team. Amen. You should be like them now. <laughs> all right, all of us, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. My name is Robin Molunda. I love the Lord as my personal savior. Yes, I confirm I'm married. And uh, we have uh, three children, one daughter and two sons. Uh, so we are five of us, but staying in five different places. Uh, this is how, how life becomes when you become a golden age. Uh, <laughs> so five of us in different, five different places, but we are glad each one of them is fine. And we want to thank God that uh, I am here uh, to pass greetings, at least greetings from my wife. Uh, she said I should greet you. The rest, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> they rarely send greetings. <laughs> they only bring them when they are coming along. And these days, they rarely come along with me. Because many times they say, Dad, we have plans. Yes, let those who have ears hear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it's a privilege for me to be here, and I also want to bring greetings from Sitam Kisumu, uh, where I minister on a, on a daily basis, and I've asked to leave from them uh, to allow me to be out of Kisumu at least one Sunday every month. And they have gladly accepted, so every uh, one Sunday every month, I will be walking around uh, just to see what is happening in the region. And I'm glad to be here in Sitam uh, Eldoridge. The last time I came, we were in the small tent which came from Sitam Parklands, which I donated when I was senior pastor there to come and plant Sitam Eldoridge. <laughs> so I haven't been here for quite a while, and I'm just excited about the things that I see. And I want to pray that God will continue. Uh, to do great things in our midst. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, this morning I want to share with us on the indwelling presence. We have been, uh, our theme for this year is in his presence. And I'm sure that you have listened to wonderful sermons since we started the year. And perhaps if I had been here from each and every Sunday, I could say I have nothing important to add or nothing useful to add. But now that I haven't been here, Hallelujah. I have the confidence to say, as much as you have had many sermons on this, as much as you have seen so many things since the year started, I have something useful to say this morning. Praise the Lord. And this is not of me, but it is of the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will continue to minister to us as we continue in his presence. Praise be to God. We'll be referring the book of, of John chapter 14 and Acts 1, 8. And just talking about this, um, as we talk about in his presence, the overarching call is for us to abide or remain in his presence. That's really what we've been talking about, to abide in him, to remain in his presence. That's basically the overview of the theme for the year, that we have a desire so that we, God has a desire that we may abide in him, we may remain in him, that we may be in his presence. And I'm sure that we are all looking forward, we are excited, and we just want to abide in the presence of the Lord. And essentially, therefore, the call to abide is an invitation for us to make God our dwelling place and source of our lives. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? amen. That we need to make God our dwelling place, and the source of our lives. Praise be to God. And I really want to emphasize on that because that's really what God really expects from us. That we can be able to come to this point and say, Lord, you are our dwelling place. We want to dwell in you. We want to remain in you. We want to walk in you. We want to do everything in you. But above all, we want you, Lord, to be the source of our lives. And I know we have sources of income. We have sources of our livelihoods. But there's a point when we actually all realize that we even those sources of income and sources of our livelihoods are given of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I like, you know, men they keep saying sometimes, and say, tunafanya ni tunakula jasholetu. And I keep reminding them, hata jashoni la mungu. 
Because if God stopped you from sweating, you will die. Hallelujah. So thank God he allows you to sweat and keep working. So even that source of your livelihood is of God. And that's why we say God is inviting us. And God's desire is that we truly abide in him, dwell in him, and make him the source of our livelihood. Or actually appreciate him as the source of our livelihood. Because he is. Praise be to God. Our prayer is that we shall all be excited about this truly purpose to remain and truly purpose to remain in his presence and not only this year but the rest of our days on this side of eternity. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, you know, when I say a point, you say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Buena Swissan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Buena Swissan. Don't just keep quiet. You know, when I say a point, you say, you say what? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we really want to say that it's not about this year. It's not just about this quarter. But it's really our prayer is that we will truly have this desire and the urge to remain in the presence of God for the rest of our lives on this side of eternity. This is how to rehearse for our eternal residence in heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will need to make a rehearsal, you know. Uh, Pastor said when they were practicing for this, they had a mean kesha. You know, they have had many times to you know just practicing. And the, the concert will not be at the whole night. But imagine they had a whole night of practice. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you understand? So we are actually practicing for life in heaven. And we need to begin rehearsing by just having that desire, the urge, the thirst, and the hunger to be in the presence of God. But having said that, it's vital to note that the Lord doesn't just invite people to be in his presence, but asks people to create room for him to dwell in them. Now that's a very big point. You should say a big amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that's actually the core of my sharing today. That, you know, we are talking about in his presence, and whenever we talk about in his presence, we actually uh, see a situation where we are coming to God, where we are coming in his presence, where we are coming to dwell where he is, and that's why every Sunday we are coming to church, and when we come to church, we say, God, Papa, we are in your presence. Hallelujah. And that is good. But beyond that coming, Beyond that coming to him, beyond that seeking for him, that God desires that we do not only come to him, but we do not only make him our dwelling place, but that God is desiring to make a dwelling in us. Amen. To make a dwelling in you. So that you do not have this, you know, and, and I think that's where the problem is. That many times we go in the presence of God. And when we are in the presence of the Lord in this sanctuary, we are so holy. <laughs> we lift up holy hands. It's okay, sister. It's okay, brother. You are so humble in the presence of the Lord. But when we step out of that door and we go in the parking, Maybe someone blocked his Sasa, what do you mean? Will you end the driving? Will you end the driving school? Well, what? Hey, and then you are wondering, is this the same person who was lifting up holy hand? I know, I know these things don't happen here. Uh, they don't happen here. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. <laughs> they happen out there. You come to church lifting up holy hands, then you go home and your maid has not washed the utensils. Why? Ah, why? Yeah, what? Is it was is it you who was singing holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty? Here, yeah. in the presence of the Lord. But when we walk out there, it's as if we leave the Lord here. Hallelujah. We leave the Lord in church. 
and then we go by ourselves. And that's why today this country is 80% Christian. Hallelujah. But yet, is also high, it ranks so highly in corruption. The reason is, people come in the presence of the Lord, but they do not allow the Lord to dwell in them. So they come in the presence of the Lord, they leave the Lord here, and then they go by themselves. I, am, I, am I speaking to someone? These people seem not to, they seem not to be encouraging me. Am I speaking to someone? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that we come in the presence of the Lord, but we kind of have not allowed God into our lives. We have not created room for the dwelling of God in our lives. And so we actually come to church, do things in a church way, but out there we are by ourselves and we actually run our lives. The call today is that we need not only to come in the presence of God, but to allow the Lord's presence to dwell in us. Praise be to God. This is a very interesting declaration because that God was actually going to come down and abide in us. That we do not only just come to him, but that he actually comes and basically abides in us. He dwells in us. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 20. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 20 is our scripture we read. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Underline that word forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you. And he lives with you. And verse 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Now, I want you to listen that critically. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he has had a wonderful time. They have had a wonderful time being in his presence, being with him. Now he's actually declaring to them that he's going to go. And as he's going, Jesus is saying, as I am going, I am not going to leave you as orphans. In other words, though I am going, but I'm going to ask my father to give you another one like me, the Holy Spirit, who will come and the Holy Spirit will not be like me, who has been with you and now I am going. The Holy Spirit shall not be able to be crucified. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit shall come and shall be with you forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he says, as I have been with you, my Father is in me and I am going to be in you. And how am I going to be in you? Through the other counselor who is like me, who is coming to be in you, the Holy Spirit of God, the indwelling presence of God. This is what I'm calling that indwelling presence, that God doesn't just invite us to abide in his presence, but makes a commitment to dwell in us. That's the commitment that Jesus is making, that I am not, you know, <laughs> hallelujah, the soldiers can arrest me, they can crucify me, they can kill me. But another one that the Lord is going to send, he who is going to dwell in you shall be with you forever. Hey, my friends, the soldiers could not arrest the Holy Spirit. 
And that's why when Paul and Silas were in prison, hallelujah, they had locked the chain, they had locked the gates, and, and Paul and Silas just pray and they pray, and the gates of the prison just opened, hallelujah. And they were shocked, like, what just happened? It, the power of God that was resident in Paul and Silas, that the soldiers could not arrest, the gates of prison could not prevent them from working, he was with them. And that's the presence that God expects and desires that shall dwell in every believer, that we walk around in power. We walk around in the spirit. And that's what Paul will say. Don't you know that your bodies are as at the temple of the Holy Spirit? That as you walk around out there, you are a temple. You are a walking temple. You are a walking church. You are a walking system. Hallelujah. That people may see you like this, but inside you, you are hosting you are a residency <laughs> to the presence of God. Hallelujah. That is unstoppable. And that's the desire of God, brothers and sisters, that God will want to come and dwell in us through the Holy Spirit. When we fully surrender to his presence, the Lord releases his Holy Spirit upon us. And it's my desire that we ought, all of us, to come to that point and begin to surrender ourselves to the Lord. That we do not walk in our own ways and do things our own ways. That we can be able to surrender our life to him. That we do not only be Sunday Christians who come in the presence of the Lord to lift up holy hands. And after that, we leave the Lord here and walk in our own ways. That we shall decide and say, Lord, as I dwell in your presence, may you make a dwelling in me. So that wherever I am, I am with you. That is the desire of God. When the Spirit comes, Jesus laid great importance on this matter of the Holy Spirit. And he talks about the Holy Spirit, that indwelling presence. He speaks about the person of the Holy Spirit. He speaks about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He speaks about the power of the Holy Spirit. And he speaks about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Time, of course, will not allow me to talk about all that because that is a whole series. Hallelujah. But I'll just mention a few things. The person. John chapter 14 again, 16 and 17, <clears throat> which I've already read. And I will ask the Father, we read again for emphasis, lest you forget. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Remember, another helper, that he may be with you forever. That's the spirit of truth. Praise be to God. That, no, I want you to see that person here. The phrase used for the spirit, what is called um, paraclete in, uh, in Greek, is that of an advocate. One called alongside to help. There is an advocate is the one being called along to help or one who stands alongside as a friend or a patron to speak on behalf of the accused. What, what is God saying here? That, you know, what is Jesus saying here? That, you know, I have been with you. I have been speaking on your behalf. I have even helped you to pay your taxes. I have multiplied food for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but now I want to leave you with another one who will be alongside you, who will help you, who will speak on your behalf, who will walk together with you. Praise be to God. And my brothers and sisters, we need someone in our lives. We need God with us in all situations. Hallelujah. So that you know, you know when you are going through situations, I'm saying just, hey, hey, Papa. And you know he's here. Hallelujah. You are not going to begin singing a song. Malaika wa mbinguni, shuka hapa tuombe. Sasa malaika wa kuje tuombe. Hey, my friend, sutoko shakufa. Some of those situations that we go through it, and you just need to say, Jesus. And you know he's there with you. Holy Ghost, and you know he's right there with you. I'm not saying we don't sing songs. But I'm saying the songs we sing, do not disturb angels. Let the angels be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just call on Jesus, he who is with you. Hallelujah. Hey, Buena Swesan, did I say don't disturb the angels? Yes, don't disturb the angels. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a story for another day. <laughs> Just you know. When you know and you know that you are not alone, then you are not worried in any situation. 
Because you know whenever any situation comes, you just need to say, Jesus, hallelujah, Papa. Hmm. Holy Ghost, you know he's there with you. You know how not forget. How many of you have personal lawyers? You know when you have an issue, just say, I will call my lawyer. You don't have to write anything. Just call them. Instruct them. In fact, they actually tell you now what, in fact, they say, leave that to me. You don't have to bother with many things. Why? Because you have an advocate. Hallelujah. Buenas Fesan. Buenas Fesan. When you have an insurance, they say, do not accept liability. Why? Because you know you have an, an insurance cover. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. That I want you to be linked. I want you to receive. I want you to connect with someone who is going to be with you, to walk with you, to walk, outside, to walk alongside you, and that even when you are accused, he will speak on your behalf. That's the one we need. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need that indwelling presence in us. He is also called by other names as the counselor. Hallelujah. The comforter, the intercessor, the strengthener, the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, look at those words. Are you seeing those words? Are you seeing those words? Are you seeing them? Yes. Counselor. Did I hear they are announcing counselors to join the counseling ministry? Hallelujah. We need counseling, actually. Counseling is key. But imagine Jesus is saying, you will have a counselor resident in you. <laughs> you know, when you have a resident counselor within you, hallelujah. Sometimes when you are so confused and wondering what to do, and you hear the Holy Spirit mention to you, do this. Is the counselor resident in you, giving you advice and giving you directions, hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise and glory. He is our counselor. And imagine, he is our comfort. We all need comfort. We go through tough situations. We go through loss of loved ones. And you need a rest and comforter in you. Hallelujah. You know the comforters who come even for the funeral. Many. They say, oh, we'll be with you. You are together, my sister. Don't worry. <laughs> and after the burial, they all go. Because they can't stay with you. It's not possible for them to abandon their homes and stay with you. But imagine you have a resident comforter called the Holy Spirit. That even when everyone is gone, in the silence of the night, in the loneliness of the moment, the Holy Spirit rests in you. He's our comforter. He comforts you, my brother. He comforts you, my sister. He comforts you all the time because he is our comforter. Mm. The intercessor. What? And when you know, <laughs> hallelujah, that there's someone just praying for you, interceding for you, hallelujah. You know, many times we tell people our situation, they say, yeah, I will pray for you. And that's actually all they have to say. We will pray for you. They never pray. Hallelujah. But imagine... When you have the Holy Spirit with you, hallelujah, imagine he's the intercessor. That's why I love those prayers that used to go like this. And the Lord, even those things that we have not prayed, let the Holy Spirit pray for us. It is true. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us, hallelujah. He intercedes for us. He groans for us. He, he is our comforter. He is our strengthener. He is our comforter. The great intercessor. You need an intercessor. I need an intercessor. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know, Elder Agnes, how often you pray for me, but I know you say you pray for me. I believe you. <laughs> but I know you have so many other people to pray for. You might never pray for Pastor Robin every day. So I, and, and you know, as pastors, as pastors, you know, people, you know, the, when you see us, just say, pray for us. The other day I was on the plane. Then we was with another lady. Then he said, you look familiar. Are you, are you, are you Pastor Molonda? I said, yeah. Where did we meet? One of the sitans. And then when we were just about to light past, he said, Pastor, I have a prayer request. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was different. 
This one was different. She said, but one thing I know is that many times we only ask, we only present our prayer requests. But pastor, may I know how can I pray for you? I was, I, oh my goodness. I, my goodness. I just felt like I'm on another flight to heaven. Hallelujah. Because delegate members who ask us, Pastor, how may I pray for you? My friends, pastors also need prayer. Uh -uh. You don't seem to believe me. <laughs> Let me come closer. <laughs> we also need prayers. Are, are you understanding? <laughs> Hallelujah. But because I know that you rarely pray for me, Hallelujah. Every morning I have, this is a prayer I pray. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Because when I have the Spirit within me, I know out there people will expect me to pray for them. But I know there is another intercessor who knows my needs and intercedes for me. And may I tell you, brothers and sisters, this intercessor is for all of us. He's for all of us. You only need to make room for him to come and dwell in you. That's all you need. <laughs> I know a colleague friend of mine who once said that, you know, sometimes people used to come and every time, Pastor, pray for me, Pastor, pray for me. So he made it a habit, you come to his office, say, oh, you want me to pray for me? Say, okay, come, come, come. Then you come, then he takes you to church. Say, kneel there. And I'm kneeling here. Let's pray. <laughs> yes, because this story, ya kila wakati kuombewa, ombewa, 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 na umepatiwa ruhusa, ya kumkaribisha roo mtakatifu, akaenda niyako, awe muombesi wako, anatembea na wewe, anakuelekeza, na umefunga roo yako. Sasa road yu huyu anasunguka. Anataka kuingia umekaa ngumu ndugu umekaa ngumu. He cannot penetrate. Now simple things where you just need to say Jesus. You say pray brethren pray for me pray for me pray for me pray for me and Jesus is with you Holy Spirit is supposed to be with you you just need even to look the devil rebuke him in Jesus name Rishwa. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying we do not pray for one another. What I'm simply saying, it's not possible for me even to pray for all of you. It's not possible for us to remember you when you are going through a unique situation. And that's why Jesus is saying, I will give you another comforter. He shall be with you. He shall in the seat with you. He shall walk with you. He shall lift you up. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is that indwelling presence that we all need. That as we desire to be in his presence, that we open up our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us. The intercessor, the strengthener and the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit. Jesus referred to him as another comforter. And what he was simply saying, he is another of the same kind. What he was simply saying is that I and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. So although my Father is in heaven, I have been with you, and now I am going to heaven, I and my Father, we are going to send another one just like me to come down and dwell in you and be with you forever. What an amazing thing. I, I, am I communicating? Hallelujah. Am I communicating? And what was the purpose of this indwelling presence of God? Knowing the road ahead, the challenges and the trials, Jesus pointed disciples to one who was to teach them, give them counsel, comfort them, and even convict the world as they ministered. John 16, verse 7 and 9, But I tell you the truth, 
it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he says, when he comes, hallelujah, <laughs> when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. So he's the counselor, he's not only a counselor, but the convictor, hallelujah. He's the one who convict men of their sins. When we let the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and direct us, we shall get connected to total counsel and direction in real time. Now understand, that, you know, underline that with real time. Hallelujah. That when you are in a situation and you need counsel, you need help, when the Holy Spirit is resting in you, you get counsel, direction, real time. <clears throat> that statement, what is that statement? The last statement says, my testimony. What are those dates? Are those dead? Those are dead. 13th of March, 2023. What if I gave you an appointment for that date? Eh? Huh? It's gone, but what if I told you 13th of March, 2023? 13th, just 13th. People don't like it. You like 13th? It's all these people don't like it. But I have a testimony. And I, I, I normally encourage people to, to remove their testimonies. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago, I got an invitation to go and attend the graduation of my daughter. My, my daughter is graduating in May in the U.S. So we got an invitation end of January. And we applied for a U.S. visa end of January. And the earliest date available for interview was 21st of September. <laughs> yes, 21st of September. I put it in. Then someone had asked, said, just keep going online. Some dates keep opening. So my computer, this one, was open the, way the U.S. Website was open on this computer like for 18 hours. So I'll check after every two, three hours whether there's any data available. About two weeks ago, a date opened for 21st of August. <laughs> and then Monday last week, a date opened 21st of July, that's my birthday actually. No, I think it was 11th of July. <clears throat> As I was there and uh, that time in Kisumu, we are having 320 days of prayer and fasting. Yes, 320 days. So we just st never stopped praying after the fast we are continuing. So what we do is that every day, that, you know, if you are born on fast, Every fast of the month is your prayer and fasting day. So 21st was my prayer and fasting day. And that's when I got 11th of July. And then I went to my computer. I opened this website of the U.S. And I started talking to God. The beauty of sometimes staying away uh, alone. You can now talk to God like a man talks to a friend. I looked at the computer and then I started talking to God. I said, Papa, this month of March and April, so fungwe to katare tu apo. Fungwe to katare tu apo tu mungu kapatikane tu apo. Hallelujah. Then, <clears throat> on Wednesday night, last week, I made the same prayer. I went and checked again before I go to sleep. <laughs> Papa, I said, Papa. This March, April, Katari to Kapatikane. So I went to sleep. On Thursday morning, 
we were having advisory prayer online, 5 a.m. to 1, uh, 5 to 6 a.m. We do every Thursday. We pray online. Then we went to prayer. And the first item of prayer was pray for your needs. So I, my need was, Papa, Katare <laughs> Tukapatkane. Oh, by the way, are you with me here? Are you following my testimony? All right. So as we finish praying that first session, we go to the second session, I hear a voice very loudly, very loudly, audibly, go online. Go online, go online. But I say, but I'm online. Go online, go online. Then I remember the online that I've been on all through is the website. So, but we are praying. Say, and I heard, go online, go online. You can imagine the senior pastor. <laughs> I mean, this is a prayer service of the advisory going on another website. And I actually went there. As I opened the website like this, a date 13th dropped. It just dropped 13th of March, and I saw it drop. It's like someone was just canceling the appointment that time. It drops right there. It's in red, and it changes to black. I click on it. It accepts 13th of March, 9 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I like... <laughs> now... Before that, even my wife had given up. She was, I don't even, me, I'm, when we parted a week earlier in Kisumu, she told me, Iki to Nikama to Taina, and I told her, Kama wa utaki kwenda, shauriako. Mimi ninaenda, hii graduation lazima niende. So I called her immediately after the prayer service. I, you know, we have an appointment at the U.S. Embassy on Monday, 13th of March at 9 a.m. And she thought I was kidding. Say, what did you say? I said 13th of March. We have an appointment. And we had an appointment on Monday this week. And as I speak right now, I have the visa. I have the visa. In fact, when I went there, I had many documents. Hey. <laughs> you have to pay a bit. Birth certificate, marriage certificate, bank statements. You what? Do you know what they asked me? Um, do you have an invitation? I said, yes. Can we see the, your daughter's uh, I-20? I-20 is a student visa. Now, do you know what? We didn't have that visa. Her visa... Until that morning, when you are going to the U.S. Embassy, then I just said, we were talking to her. I be, know she had not slept. Then I told her, please, can you send us, just send us the I-20. So she sent it on WhatsApp. We printed it at the cyber just at the gate of the U.S. Embassy. And imagine those are the only two things they asked. My friend. Uh -uh. You, you know... I'm going back to the point I was saying, when you have the Holy Spirit resident in you, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. you have the guidance from the Lord real time, yeah. hallelujah, real time, when you need it, it comes, yeah. it comes, yeah. it comes. Sasa yeah. yonge goja wendi pasta mlunda guombe, na rom takatifa meongea na we gone line, gone line, unaka angum. Kwa sababu huwelewi wakati roa naongea na wewe. Hata sisi nginu naanza kukemea pepo shindwa, shindwa, pepo shindwa. Na kumbe ni roa naongea na wewe go online. Senior pastor alienda online katikati ya maombi. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu roa meongea. Anasema go online. Nika pata tare 13th of March. Nika yandika chini 13th of March. 2023, 9 a.m., Satatu wa Subui, na nikaenda, na my interview took three minutes. Yeah. I said three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> my friends, we need the Holy Spirit. I am saying we need the Holy Spirit. We need to allow the Lord to dwell in us, to direct us, to guide us, to advise us, to counsel us real time. 
real time. The power of the Holy Spirit. This is not just now guidance real time. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes in power. Jesus, he declared that the Holy Spirit will bear witness about him. And that through the Holy Spirit, the disciples will gain the power to witness. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Thus the Holy Spirit was not to be witnessing in an isolated vacuum. Rather he was to use the disciples as vessels. Now this is important to realize that God, Jesus wanted his mission to continue. But yet he was going back to heaven. He needed the disciples to actually, he needed himself to continue with it. And he was sending the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit therefore was not coming to be a witness in a vacuum to be hovering around the way he used to hover around in the book of Genesis. But he, they needed to indwell people. Now he can use people as vessels to continue with the work of ministry. And that's why God's desire is not only that we come in his presence, but that he also fills us and dwells in us so that he can use us as his vessels to accomplish his mission. Buona sana. So wakati unakuja kwa Mungu unafurahi Mungu anakujaza Mungu anataka pia akae ndani yako akutumie Jina la Bwana libarikiwe The Holy Spirit doesn't roam around or hover over the waters like in the Genesis story as I've said but rather looks for a dwelling place Shall you be that dwelling place that the presence of God shall indwell Shall you be that dwelling place that the Holy Spirit shall indwell? Shall you be that vessel that the Holy Spirit will come and make residence in you so that he can continue to accomplish his work on earth? Paul reminds the Corinthians, I said earlier, that their bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so you are. And so I am. The temple of the Holy Spirit. What this means is that God doesn't just want to reside in us so that we may look powerful but so much more that he may work through us to accomplish his mission on earth. And you forgot to be saying amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> so if you have the Holy Spirit and you are not serving God in one way or the other, then you are wasting his power. I know that's a very hard point. You may not want to say amen, but that's the truth. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, huh? and you are just there, to now Lisa Ashers, you are just there. To now Lisa Sunday School teachers, you, you are just there. To Kiuliza choir members, you, you are just. I love at Umeja Rome Takatif na Chapani. Mungu aku to pair Rome Takatif ili to Unge Kwandimi. Tanks were just a sign. Yes. The purpose of God giving us the Holy Spirit is not so that you may speak in tongues. Sasa kama umejaswa roho mtakatifu na hakuna kitu unafanya katika huduma, you are wasting his power. In fact, you are making noise. You should stop. Hey, when I Ah, watch your story. Ile nguvu mpewa, ili ni mungu kutumie kama chombo chake, cha kufanya huduma yake. China labwana libarikiwe. Am I speaking? Am I connecting with you? In the scissors, praise the Lord. Time has come. Even for you to leave the intercessory room and go and deal with real demons out there in the mission field. Why just say, me to intercessor? Yes, we appreciate that. But time come when you have now to go and face the real demons and cast them out. Because that's the reason the Holy Spirit is in you. Am I communicating? That's a story for another day. I will leave that point, Pastor, so that you can invite me again. Uh, hopefully, they will want me to come back so that I can finish. Let, allow me to speak on the presence as we come to the end. Jesus, 
pointed out to the believers that he will come and dwell and abide and take residence in them. The Father and the Son will dwell in the believer through the Spirit. And that's the desire of God. That is the plan of God. That God wants to make a residence in you, my sister. God wants to make a residence in you, my brother. God wants to, res to, to reside in us. The Father and the Son will be dwelling in the believer through the Spirit of God. John 14, 20 and 23, In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And verse 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. <laughs> Listen to, see what Jesus is saying. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our boat with him. Hallelujah. <laughs> And you say me to Pastor Ali Kucha to Navi to Singina and to Amia Mungwa Kain Dani to Sasa to Juata Kaj and Dani to Skiza. Yeniki Zungu Dad. He says, If anyone loves me, and I know all of us love the Lord. Hallelujah. Any one of you who doesn't love the Lord here? We all love the Lord. So if one anyone loves me. He will keep my word. And the word is what I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. Believe it. And then, and my father will love him. And the Lord loves you. The Lord loves me. The Lord loves us. And we, now Jesus has changed the story. And we will come. Hallelujah. Am I still there? We will come to him and do what? And make our abode with him and reside in him. Make our residence in him. Hallelujah. So Jesus is not just looking for you to come to him and go out, in, out, in, out. He is saying, when you love me, I shall come through the Holy Spirit. Therefore me, my father, and my and the spirit of God, we shall come and make a dwelling in him. In her, in you, in me, in us. That's the desire of God. That's the desire of God. Hmm. God, this was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will come down upon those who believed in him. And I want you to begin desiring for that indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That promise for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was for all believers. It is for you. It is for me. It is for all of us. And it's only through the Holy Spirit that we can experience genuine presence of God. Haposema, amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Your attitude determines your altitude. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot fully experience his presence. Takujanga tu wanaimba, hata sa zingine, hapa sa zingine wanaimba, na unasema, na worship team tena, leo wanaimba hache. Shuali, yani you don't connect. Because you are disconnected from the presence of God. And so you cannot easily connect. As a matter of fact, is the indwelling presence that determines the external that determines our external, sorry for that, that determines our external experience of his presence. It's your internal indwelling presence that determines our external experience. Allow me to conclude by saying the invitation to be in his presence will only be fully actualized when we allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. A Christian without the Holy Spirit is hollow, powerless, and rudderless. One man has said, unfortunately today, if the Holy Spirit were to be taken away from our churches, 
many churches will continue as usual. Because they rarely depend on the Holy Spirit to do their things. God forbid that we could be found to be among them. That we are used to doing things our way, sit them way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Even now, I'm sure now you're saying now this pastor, what time is he going to finish? By the way, the Holy Spirit could actually just say, this service continues up to 2 p.m. Yeah, relax in his presence. Hallelujah. Why are you looking at your watch now? I'm saying the Holy Spirit could say he hasn't said, so we are going to finish. <laughs> Praise be to God. Please let us not be hollow, powerless, and rudderless Christians. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Be filled by the power of God and the presence of God. Let the presence of God indwell us, reside in us, abide in us, so that whether we are in church or we are out of church, whether we are in the salon, whether we are in class, whether we are in business, whether we are in the shower room, the presence of God is with us. Hallelujah. The presence of God is with us. And that's the only way we are going to impact this world and cause a difference in the world. When we allow the Spirit of the Lord to indwell us, when we allow the presence of God to indwell us, when we allow the Lord to abide in us so that we are walking. And as we walk, we know we are walking temples. Hallelujah. We are walking residences of the Holy Spirit of God. And when you do that, when you get there, you will never come to church late like you are used to doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. How can we tell God, God, we have an appointment with you at 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. By the way, the time you are going to come to church, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to come to church. And I have not said anything. <laughs> I love Kesho Chumatatu. 6 a.m. Mumefika kwa barabara. 5.30 a.m. Muku kwa barabara na watoto. Kwa nangoja bus. Chumapili. 8.30. Uwezi fika kanisa. Kuna kitu na kosa. I want to connect with the Holy Spirit. That will get you running and yearning. Oh my goodness. You are not getting. I will get you running and yearning in his presence. And you will not be here at 8.30. You will be here at 7.30 to pray. Hallelujah. And we will be here. When we call for Kesha. It's not only for those who are desperate. Because even you, you are desperate. It's just that you don't know that you are. We are all desperate. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. You do need the Lord. Oh, God. Let me st just stop here. And say this. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot connect with his presence or even sense his presence. But God's will is that you connect with his presence. You will sense his presence. You will sense when he's leading you and guiding you, my sister. When you see this young man coming to me and say, will you marry me? The Holy Spirit will speak to you right, right there and say, this is a con man. <laughs> and you will not need to go and fast and pray. Or marry a con man, then you come after three months and say, hey, 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 Pastor, this man you gave me, who gave you? It's you who brought him to us. <laughs> but you are moving rattlelessly, powerlessly, empty. So you say, yes, yes, yes. Will you marry me? Yes, yes. Oh, God. Shall we rise up? Just stand up, just stand up, just stand up. Just stand up, friends. Just stand up. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. Before the Spirit came upon Jesus, he was simply a son of a carpenter. 
But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. He needed the Holy Spirit. The disciples of Jesus Christ needed the Holy Spirit. Before the Holy Spirit came, they were fearful, timid men. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, Peter, man, who had denied Jesus, stood up, preached, and 3,000 people got saved in one day. The disciples and the early church right on the move of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts chapter 13, the Bible says when they were cut that to pray and fast, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, separate for me, Paul and Parapas, for the work that I have set for them. And you know that separation of Paul and Parapas to go out, really the message of Christ went across the world. And that's why you and I are believers today. Because the believers, the early believers believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. They obeyed the commission of the Holy Spirit. They obeyed the sending of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you that's what the church needs. That's what Jesus is desiring for us. And that's what Sitam Eldoret needs. Our mission to know God and make him known. And we, we love to know him, but we have always resisted to make him known. And I was telling the people of Kisumu, we have become spiritually obese. To Nakula, to Nakula, to Nakula, to knowing him, knowing him, knowing him. At the same time, I said, hey, Pastor, you're someone in Missouri. You receive. But going, we resist. We begin saying, mission is done by those who pray by those who give and those who go. So imagine that as long as you have given your money, you are okay. My friend, God is not looking for your money. He's looking for you. Ah, you didn't catch it. <laughs> I swear. God is not looking for your money. When he says go out and preach, it's not the money he needs. He needs you. Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are that vessel that Jesus has chosen to fill with the Holy Spirit so that he can use. Pesa mungu ameweka roho ya kuhubiri. Hakuna. Hata ukitupea billion, na tuiweke tu hapa. Hakuna mtu atawakoka kwa sababu iko billion shillings hapa. Lasima mtu apatikana aende. Aende. Hata kama ni kwa miguu aende. Hallelujah. Hata kama ni kwa baiskeli aende. Baba, we are in your presence. Worship team, just come. Baba, we are in your presence. Pour your rain upon us. Let it rain. Just take a moment. I don't know what you are. Just desire the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to do this. Our time for the service has come to an end. But I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. Whether you are filled with the Holy Spirit, ask for more of his infilling. And if you have never received the Holy Spirit... Please come to this altar. We want to pray for you. And you receive the Holy Spirit and the power of God to fill you right now. You have never received the Holy Spirit. Just come and you are desiring. Say, Papa, fill me today. I am desiring your presence. Just come. Come, 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 come. Quickly. You should come running, actually. Hallelujah. Just say, yes, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. Come. Come.